This is Sound Situations and we are on the 27th floor of the RBC Plaza Condos here in downtown Raleigh and I am with Peter Lamb and the Wolves. Gentlemen, welcome. Hello. And it's actually three of five parts of Peter Lamb and the Wolves, but if you could do a quick rundown and introduce yourselves and tell me your name and what you play. Okay. Uh, I'm Peter Lamb and I play tenor saxophone in the band. I'm George Knott. I play this double bass and the bass saxophone. Who are we missing? We're missing Al Strong, who's our trumpet player. And uh, Stephen Kaufman, who is our drummer. music we play? Uh, we play all types of strange infectious stuff that hopefully will get you moving that will also make you think about things. I'd say we're more of a jazz band but we're not a jazz band. Okay. Because we're all, we all play in jazz bands and this is not, Peter Lamb is really not a jazz band. I don't know. What would you call it, Mark? I think it's like, the main thing we want is it to be fun and uh, to me it's got a lot of like old school R&B elements so like New Orleans R&B elements. Like 50s, 40s R&B. Yep. Not, not like Nelly or... <laughs> Stuff that's, it's like, it's a little more like laid back and countrified. And then... history and they have a hip-hop history 
what about you know the the jazz or the blues? What kind of history of music is that represented in the triangle? Uh, well, first off, the Triangle had one of the, in, in the 70s, it had a really famous jazz club called the Friday Night Gown. And like Duke Ellington, Stan Getz, Count Basie, you know, George Shearing, um, you name it. If they were alive and they were a famous jazz musician, they played there. There's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of work to be had and a lot of people that seem to enjoy it. You know, there's two jazz stations in the Triangle, which is unheard of. I think it's a very nice place for jazz music, I, I, personally. You know, I mean, clubs come and go, gigs come and go, but there's a lot of work and there's a lot of enthusiasm towards it and, and by the people that are playing it. You guys did your last album by recording it live. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about the decision behind doing that and the process. I mean, we all kind of came to that decision. We wanted to, ha to have it live because we wanted there to be wrong notes. And we wanted it to be out of tuneness, and we wanted it to feel like an organic organism, as opposed to like something that you know has been has been trimmed down and photoshopped, you know, and 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 and, and, and looped and, and laid, layered, right, and, yeah. and 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 pitch corrected, and you know, we didn't want any of that. We wanted something that you put it on, and you know, like this sounds like it it really exists. It's real. There's something really great about just like having to show up no matter where you are and be really present to something completely different that helps you stay fresh as a musician. Like you said, doing many things keeps you fresh, right? Plus having a normal life, like you like to ride bikes, you know, I mean, there are other things. I mean, all these things are important. I mean, yeah, yeah. you know, like if if you have a week where you're work. I mean, there are weeks when when I I will work seven nights a week, and I at the end of the week I am not fresh. You know, I'm like a stale piece of fish. You know, and I have nothing to say because I just I'm burnt out. You know, and I, I, some, I like having nights off. Yeah. And I, I like doing things besides music because that influences my music in some some, some way. Fun gigs. 
I love playing outside. I love I love playing for dancers. I think that's some of our funnest gigs. That's key. Yeah. That's when we have dancers come out. When there's an area for... When, when people are shaking it and, and getting into the music, the music somehow gets better. You know, it's like it's like it's like it's like you're throwing like gas on the fire. You know, you're feeding off of what's ab happening. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just I mean, old, young, men, women, it doesn't matter. I mean, if people are really getting into it, then we get into it. You know. try very easily thinking about like pleasing other people and that's not what I'm talking about. I think when you're authentically yourself and you're telling the truth through what you're doing, you're really enjoying what you're doing in a real way that's not affected. I think you're really of service to people because it's it's like you're putting really pure energy out in the world and I think that's really important and music can be a very powerful way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's what it means to me. I think being a musician, uh, I think it's so much fun to put on my suit and go hang out with my best friends and make people happy. And, uh, and also make myself happy by playing music that I really like and being creative and uh, expressive. So that's, that's what it is for me. Okay.
Childrish, and I play keys and I sing. Uh, my name is Joe Mazzatelli, and I play bass. I'm John Booker, and I play guitar and sing. I'm James Hepler, H-E-P-L-E-R, <laughs> and I play drums. And the other dudes are cool. I'm Curtis Armstead, and I play guitar. Awesome. And the band is I Was Totally Destroying It. Um, name. I. <laughs> you know, though, with a name like this, I Was Totally Destroying It. Yeah. What's the story behind that? Or is there one? It's not much of a story, it's yeah. Really it's God. literally a funny thing that somebody said one time, and somebody said, that would make a good band name. I was that somebody that yeah. said the thing, yeah. and then someone else said, I, I think it was that would make a yeah. stupid band name, but I mean, that was kind of, <laughs> um, or, you know, slash awesome. I think people read that and they think, like, oh, who do they think they are? They think they're totally destroyed. It's like, it's, it's ironic, it's silly, it's supposed to be stupid. We also <laughs> came up with it before we decided that we wanted to be a serious band. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> serious now. I mean, yeah. you all live in one house. And Except for him. James well. <laughs> doesn't I live on the outside. <laughs> Thankfully. But, but this is your job now. This is your, yeah. mm -hmm. there is no, oh, I've got to make sure I can still work at such and such. Here and there. Here and there. We, we, we all have like odd jobs at this point, mm -hmm. kind of. Um, pick them up whenever you can, you know, like whether it's the, the job where I work, uh, you don't, you, n you never accrue vacation time the way if you want a day off, you have to find one of the other employees that's willing to work that day for you. And the idea that I would be able to find substitutes for probably like 95 shifts that I'm going to miss between now and the end of the year, like, it's just really not realistic. Yeah. There would, it would never happen. It would never happen. But everybody's given up their like full time thing. And to focusing. Do this. Yeah. So does the music change now for you guys at all? I don't. No, I, don't I, mean, know. I was going to say that. I like we took it pretty seriously before. That's yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. Is that it, it's not like the things line up, you know, in a way where it's like, okay, well, we're taking it more seriously, so now we have to be more mainstream or poppy or anything like that. We, we don't think like that. We just like different kinds of music and don't even worry about, you know, the, the connotations of, you know, whether it's mainstream or, or anything like that. Um, but I was going to say that we've been edging towards taking it this seriously for a really long time now. It kind of, it's just been a progression towards that and you know, each each year feels like we make another step in, in, in regards to taking it seriously and, and, uh, and taking uh, the music to whatever next level it's going to go to. <laughs> What do 
you guys do to keep your minds clear and focus on the music? I don't think we knew that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, do you we, have any suggestions? We try. Like, <laughs> I mean, well, we try to we try to see the, the end game, and uh, you know, it's really stressful because we do we do our own booking, and and I mean, we do have a few people that you know help us out here and there and they're great but like for the most part we're a very self-sufficient band so we're busy with all of the aspects of being banned like all of the time james could tell you the most about this because he's like about to explode well that, that is the thing that we argue about the most right now too is that we, we practice so much and uh you know we're, we're just so uh our music is so defined to a point now where we all know the song so well that uh that's the main thing that we have to concentrate on now is just focusing on the music when it's time to focus on the music and you know, not letting all the different business stuff that we have to take care of with what we hate get in the way of that. Yeah. Uh, but you do it, it for the music. The yeah, music I mean it's oh it's all well worth it. But love. like all yeah. those things just stay in your head all the time. When you're in the van it's like it's tour. This is we're on the clock the whole time. Destroying it come together. What was the result? Was it a result of other bands kind of? It started way back in 1999. <laughs> it was. It was just a matter of good timing on, on our part. Like as far as everybody else's old bands kind of disintegrating or people moving away or whatever it was. But we all needed something new, and we got it together. I think the idea was like, oh, let's just. I was I was bummed on music for a number of reasons at the time. I was like, let's just have fun and not worry about anything else, let's you know, play a couple of local shows. And uh, and then after like a month of saying that, I was like, okay guys, what if we would have recorded an album this summer and, and just just did that one album? And, I was, and, every, and that was gonna be it. We were just gonna track a record, put it out that summer and call it. And I was like, what if, that, what if we recorded like 17 songs for that record? <laughs> and then it just kind of snowballed, you know, by the end of that year, which was 2007, uh, yeah. we were talking about like touring the following summer. It just went on and on from there. Like that, like I said, each year we kind of tacked on new responsibilities and new uh, just waits to make it official. So you guys go out and you tour a lot, and you've been really pushing it hard this year, coming in this year to album releases. Do you think that the scene over the last couple of years, or the community, has helped support that and? help build that for you guys? The clubs in this area, they've just like done so many favors for us. Um, they, you know, put us as openers for like huge bands and that's been awesome. They, you know, let us try to pull off some ridiculous shows and ridiculous lineups and, and when we've asked for favors from them, they've, they've come through for us. So like the venues around here have just been awesome for us. Our our local fan base too is just incredible. Like we have we have fans that come to every single show, even when they know. Like we have fans that come and see us two days in a row, even when we say to them like, "Oh, we're playing the same set both of these nights." Like, yeah, great, awesome. I love these. Everything that makes this <laughs> scene great, has, like every element that makes this uh, what what I prefer to refer to as the music community. Uh, so strong over all these years, um, have been very supportive of us and very good to us. The sort of the townies and the fans, uh, I think they find maybe our music to be not a little on the palatable side for what they, you know, people, to be honest, people who like some of the more challenging bands from our scene and some of the bands that make our scene so great and unique that we love, that yeah. we love too, yeah, um, don't necessarily come to see our shows very much, you know, this is very much a, um, you, you, a lot of bands play in front of a lot of the same people, and we've really made it our focus to try to reach out to the people who uh, don't recognize the scene the same way that, that we do. Um, but it's been awesome for us because it's allowed us a way. I mean, the, the music scene, it, it is, people forget how small it is. I mean, like, you know, this is a big area when you combine the triangle into one you know, hole, but 
you know, the, a, a lot of people, even the ones that support it and really love the local music scene, and, and we do love the local music scene, now, so including us, but we've really just been lucky through, through things like KNC and and and, uh, and Deep South and things like that, uh, to be in front of people that, that just, you know, I wish they did pay more attention to the local music because they would find a lot of things that they didn't know about, but uh, we, we tend to play to people that haven't heard of a lot of the local bands. They kind of they somehow stumble upon us and they're just like wow this is great there's like a local band in town and they, just, <laughs> they don't even know you know and like but they but they take a liking to us because I think they are the people that want the slightly more palatable thing um, and that, that's just what they're used to maybe they came up on a different kind of music or something and uh, and that's been awesome it seems I've been in a lot of bands that were the other way around and uh, it does feel like you kind of run around in the circle playing with the same people which can be fun but um, not as fulfilling, wherein this band has been really lucky to, it just seems like we're constantly uh, able to get in front of new faces.